Okay, so the first objective is to define our ultimate goal, or define your ultimate goal. And so in the psychological flexibility literature, there's this, I, there's this concept or this way of describing it where we move from, we want to move from the focus on feeling good, like my, you know, my motivation is just to feel good, get rid of the pain, get access to the good stuff, and that, but that is usually focused on your immediate environment and your immediate circumstances. So, you know, painful, painful or aversive stimulus, either present or, or pending, do everything I can to get rid of or avoid that pain, positive, you know, um, there's a, you know, positive uh, outcome that's immediately accessible in the here and now, and so I'm going to do whatever I can to gain access to that, um, all in an effort of feeling good, all in an effort of, you know, gaining access to those immediate reinforcers. The problem, however, is that sometimes those, Im those immediate actions that we choose to take or automatically take because it's you know, uh, um, a habitual pattern of behavior that we have developed over time due to our history of reinforcement um, within, our, within our life history. The problem is, is that it, those types of things tend to work against us in the long run because we're focused on just this immediate sense of what's good and what's bad and getting rid of the bad and getting access to the good. But if, if they're not, if those things aren't necessarily in alignment with our ultimate goal, then our actions could work against us and it could make it more difficult in the long run to, to get to the really good stuff in life that we, that we really want. And so what acceptance asks us to do, requires us to do, is to really attempt to reconnect with our higher purpose and our motivation and our drive and why, you know, what is, what is the meaning of this life that we're living and the actions that we're taking? Because when you, once you reconnect with that higher person or higher purpose, like I am a person who wants to do this. I am a person who is motivated to do and be seen as you know, all of these different things. Um, once you're attuned to that, those situations in life in which we um, are exposed to pain triggers, so those environmental stimuli, internal or external, which activate these you know, habitual response patterns to avoid pain, if we're connected with our higher purpose and those pain triggers come up, the ones that we've accepted, we understand, where that came from, we understand those patterns of behavior, but we, um, we know once we've accepted them and we know where they're coming from and they know the problems that I ca they cause us in the long run, if we, um, if we allow those pain triggers to activate action patterns which knock us off course, once we're able to accept that pain, we can, we can more easily and more readily continue on our paths, even if, even in the presence of that, of that pain and that suffering and those bad feelings. I can keep moving, I can keep walking forward, even though my thoughts and my thoughts and my feelings are telling me, stop what you're doing, time out, you must immediately make this pain go away. You must do something, you must, you know, you must take a drink, you must smoke a bowl, you must um, watch a show, you must avoid, you must, you know, put everything away, right? Those things are going to knock us off course and keep us from living our, our lives of our best self. Um, so when we can accept that and accept our pain, know our, know our purpose, know our path, it makes it easier to, you know, 
thank you know thank the dictator within thank your mind thank you frank for letting me know that this is there's something to be concerned about i am going to continue taking steps and moving forward even in the presence of these challenges so when we get wrapped up in the day to the day we can you know, it's often common that we forget about the big picture. So defining our ultimate goal allows us to take a step back, consider what we really want, what we're really working toward, um, and an activity which helps to kind of put your life into perspective is to um, do a kind of a narration of your life well into the future as though you've already lived. So the, um, so the activity for today is to do just that. It's to narrate your life from the time you're 20 until you're 100 um, and kind of uh, identifying some of those key events in your life that have that have made you who you are and have brought you the most joy in life. And so this activity will help kind of put into perspective where it is that you're going and, and who, who it is, the, who you are, who it is that you want to be as a person. So, um, so for my self story, uh, I, in, in the uh, handout that is, that is available to you, there's a lot more details, but um, this, is how, this is how I would tell my story. If, if I was imagining that I'm 100 years old and I'm sitting down with my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren and thinking about all of you know all of the experiences that i've had in my life and wanting to share with them my life history and my life path in an effort to you know teach them you know teach them about me and leave them with something that might help them in the future so here's what i would say i would say that when i was 20 years old i was struggling to escape the pain of the past i was pushing myself i was i was going to school, I was trying to stay focused, um, but I was also struggling to maintain relationships and really, and really deepen relationships. Every time that there was a challenge that came up with a friend or a boyfriend or a parent or a grandparent, aunts or uncles, whatever, um, I would act as if, okay, well that, I'm not gonna deal with that, I'm gonna push that away, it doesn't matter, I'm not gonna let it get to me, I'm just gonna, push it, push it out, push it out of my life. Because I don't want it. I don't want that pain. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. And so I'm going to run as fast as I can, work as hard as I can. And then if I, you know, if I don't have anything else to distract me like work, I'm going to do other things to numb the pain. Um, at 40 years old, I've, I've come to this point in my life where I came, or I came to the point in my life where I was able, finally able to accept the pain, accept it for what it is, take action to address those painful circumstances and those painful memory and that painful history, taking action to address it with the people um, that I need, you know, talk to the people I needed to talk to and explain my experience so, we had, so I had a better sense of understanding began share, you know, I began sharing my experiences with others and it allowed me to accept my pain, live with it, allow that, allow it to be a passenger in my life while still remaining fully committed to action. In the 20 years after that, until I was, by the time I was 60 years old, I had spent 20 years acting in accordance with my values. I, um, started Action for a Peaceful World, I built our Alaskan oasis, and I you know, worked with a lot of people on a personal and professional level to help them 
live more in accordance with their values as I lived more in accordance with mine. At 80 years old, I, had, I was a person who had lived a full life full of peace and love and joy and um, children and grandchildren and got to travel the world and live my life to its fullest. And at 100 years old, I'm now ready to die, a happy person who, had, who is leaving a legacy for others to build on. And as I was able to stand on the shoulders of giants in my life and in my professional field, I hope that I have left a legacy for others to build on so we can continue on this path to creating a more whole and fulfilling life for all, um, for all people, for all humanity. So this is really, this is where I want to go. This is who I want to be. This is who I want to be seen as. There, there are quite a few exercises in the, um, in the literature related to acceptance and being able to live with your, you know, live with your pain, understand who you are and why you are the way that you are, and then, and keep moving forward. So retelling your story is a really good exercise to do. Another really good exercise that's a very simple one is to do the, um, is to do something even when you're telling yourself something different. So being able to accept the thought as a thought without it being a driver. And I wanted to share with you all this um, as I was reading on the act listserv the other day, there was a post regarding acceptance and a video um, of a lecture by um, Dr. Hank Robb. And it was a really, it, it was a really nice and simple way that he was able, that he described what, um, how to accept your thoughts, accept what they are and not let them control you. And so one that, one that I practiced the other day was the, um, you know, saying something, saying something to yourself while also doing that thing. So, you know, walking, walking towards the door while saying, I can't walk towards the door. Um, and that was, that was a really good exercise for me and hopefully for you too, to kind of break that, uh, to break that connection. So um, as we're able, to, as we retell our story, as we kind of think about our vision of ourselves for our future, we can fully embrace and fully visualize who it is that we want to be, who we see ourselves as, and align our actions with those values. And as we plan out those actions in accordance with our values, every day we're going to be faced with experiences and exposure to things in our, our environments, which are going to trigger negative thought patterns, trigger ha habits, which do not serve us. And being able to be fully in the moment, notice when those things happen, and continue taking steps in the valued direction, even in the presence of those things, is the goal. But I know that it can be hard. And it's hard for me sometimes. And it's hard for me many times. And because there are so many things pulling at me every single day and because I, you know, I, I want to be everything to everybody and it's hard to break that thought pattern. It's hard to break that cycle. But always going back to this idea that I need to live my life for myself and that I, you know, I want, I want a life filled with friends and loved ones and fun and joy and peace and love. But if I don't first accept who I am and understand myself and accept what I'm all about, 
these dreams are never going to come to fruition because I'm, even though I say that that's who I want to be, if I haven't accepted my painful past, I'm, that likely means I'm going to be continually, continuously fighting to get rid of that pain, which means that I have been pulled out of the moment, I've been pulled off of my path, and I'm not going to be able to stay on track. But knowing who you are, accepting who you are, being able to live with that pain, and continue to take step forwards is the way that we are going to be able to live to our fullest potential.